the first time I saw this question, it took me a while to think about it. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't still don't really feel like I have a great way to do it. I, I just, it's kind of trial and error in my mind. Um, the first thing I would do just kind of as a reflex is they're telling me that that top equation is the same as the bottom one with the, the, the parentheses. So my instinct is why don't I just foil that out and just see what I get that probably will help me. So HX times X, that's HX squared plus HJX plus KX plus KJ. And that's equal to this other thing. But instead of writing it kind of equals alongside, I'm going to write them on top of each other. 4x squared plus bx uh, minus 45. And notice I'm kind of segmenting it a bit, right? We have the x squared pieces. Those are going to go together. And so just by like logic here, we now know that h is equal to 4. That is indisputable. The only way for this to work is if h is 4. Um, kind of similarly on the other end, We've got that k times j has to be negative 45. Now, I, I don't know what those two parts are. Maybe I can figure it out. I, I don't really know. Um, but I do know that since k and j are integers, there's a limited combination of things that this could be, right? What are the factors of 45? That's kind of what it is, right? What are What's going to multiply to get me 45? Well, it could be 45 and 1. It could be uh, 15 and 3. It could be um, 9 and 5. I think that's all the combinations. Um, yes. So it's some combination of those, right? There's, they're telling me there's no decimal. So yes, there are decimal things that multiply to get me 45, but they're telling me that none of those will work. Now the B and the K, H, like this B is going to come from combining the H, J, and the K. Now that's a little trickier because, again, I don't know what K and J are separately. I know H is 4, but I don't, I don't really know what's going on there. There's too many missing pieces. So I'm going to ignore that. <laughs> and I think that that's the key to the question. Now if we go to the answer choices, we can at least do a little bit of um, help here. We, we or have a little bit of help uh, solving. We're looking for which of these must be an integer. At the very least, choice C, 45 over, we just said h is 4, we know that that is not an integer, right? That's going to be a decimal because 45 is not divisible by 4. So that gets rid of this. The other two, a and b, include the b term, which I don't really know about, right? Like that's the least like tangible of these pieces here. So I would, I would move away from a and b and I would just be like, is there a way for me to prove that d is right? Because if so, that would be awesome. And because of what I did over here, I actually do know that D is correct, right? So 45 divided by K must be an integer because K could be any of those numbers, right? One of them could be J, right? It's, it's either K and J could be either 45 and 1 or 1 and 45, right? We don't know which one's K, which one's J, but we know that K has to be one of those numbers. So just think about it now, right? 45 divided by 1. That would be an integer, that would be 45. 45 divided by 45, that would be an integer, that would be 1, right? 45 is divisible by 15, 45 is divisible by 3, by 9, by 5. And how do we know that? Well, that's what we did to find those potential values of k, is we were, we were breaking the number 45 up into its integer parts. So this is just true based on the rules of kind of like factors. So I don't even know about A or B, they must be wrong, but I, I've never, I'm not going to bother proving them wrong because it's just, there's too many things going on here. So I think my mistake the first time I ever did this question was I was trying to prove all of the answers. I expected there to be some sort of like, you know, B equals a number at some point, but I don't think that's even possible. If you think I'm missing something, feel free to comment about it. But this is a very conceptual question. We need to kind of understand how all these unknowns are going to interact with each other. The first step, though, I think was really important, was being able to kind of connect the parts of the top equation with the bottom one. And the only way I did that was by foiling out. So another good idea on the SAT is anytime you're confused, if there's something you can do, it's probably something you should do, right? I can foil that complicated parentheses thing out and see what it looks like if it's foiled. I didn't know it was gonna help me, but it felt like since that's the only thing I kind of saw to do, I might as well do it and see what happens. It doesn't take long, and then it did get the ball rolling. Maybe you can think about this correctly without that, 
but I would not be able to. I need to see it. And so my scrap paper would have exactly this work here. I need to see what's going on. But this is a kind of hard question. At least for me, I found this one to be kind of difficult.